Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome at my next video, where I would like to, again, focus on the English language studying, learning, and how to be better, how to improve the English language skills, communication skills, how to understand them better, especially, especially when, when watching, actually, some colloquial spoken language, and how to get... Uh, the best what you can from understanding the native speakers or or even speakers of uh, the English language from different uh, foreign countries. So, and I got a demand that this time I uh, would like to focus on uh, phrasal verbs. A lot of you actually who have been studying English for a longer time or just starting now might understand what is a phrasal verb. It's a very specific grammar uh, grammar area or field of studies because actually phrasal verb is 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 not really something uh, very I would say specifically only for the English language because we have these words also and verbs also in other languages but I think it's very specific in English language because they use it on a daily basis and in colloquial in spoken in sort of casual situations. And they use it rather often even in business English. It's, it's really, really uh, highly frequent in dialogues, in texts, and how to get the message through uh, to get uh, the point to your audience. And it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty actually popular. And uh, what is actually dif difficult about phrasal verbs, I'm going to check out exact... Uh, uh, exact um, uh, I mean, the explanation and description, what is it? So what is phrasal verb? So it's coming from some basic base verb, and plus there is something added, and then they create a new uh, verbs uh, with different meanings, different context. Phrasal verb is a combination of a verb and adverb, or a preposition. For example, shut up, which we all know, or look after, take care, uh, get along with or be interested in. So it has a many, many like uh, aspects and I think you can encounter with a phrasal verb in every other sentence uh, which you use uh, in, uh, in dialogue or in some context. So, and when they actually get together, this, this verb plus adverb or verb plus preposition, they create particular meaning, particular specific meaning in some situation. What I would like to actually uh, highlight is that uh, uh, there is one phrasal verb, for instance, look after, which is usually there is a general meaning, general sense, but in different situations, in different contexts, in different sentences, it might have different meanings. So there are many, many uh, phrasal verbs with get or give, with look, which has a lot of different meanings in different contexts and situations. Sometimes it has a literal meaning, like literal, that for instance, with up or down, it means physically something up or down when you create it and uh, when you... When you uh, form it together with the with the base verb, or it has a completely figurative, a completely like different meaning, which you have to get out uh, only from the context. So this is really actually uh, sort of uh, tricky and a little bit misleading, confusing because a lot of time we understand what is put up or or get down physically, like when you when you take it literally. But when there is another context, you don't sometimes uh, understand it or you don't get it. So that's the whole problem and uh, a whole trick about that. So usually I think that the best way after my long uh, teaching skills and, and how I understand it to explain it to students is to understand it and to remember it, somehow get it through the meaning. So at a particular example, how to use it in in particular sentence to remember it in such situation. That's the best way how to learn it. Not by heart, not by alphabet or like dictionaries, because that's impossible to remember because it's pretty hard. Today I prepared for you. That's why I'm going to check it also in dictionary because I need a list. And then I can actually go through the list. 
I prepared for you the first for you the first uh, uh, first uh, yes yeah yeah. The first um, uh, phrasal verb with the uh, get. So all the phrasal verbs which we can uh, create with uh, the base verb get, and then we can actually get a lot of lot of different uh, different uh, meanings. Yes. So get is the base verb. Past simply is got. Passive is got. Be careful because a lot of dictionaries, and especially in American English, you can encounter with the form gotten. Gotten is the past uh, passive form, and uh, sometimes you can you can you can I mean meet with that in uh, archaic text or in some texts gotten and it's more american but uh, i think nowadays in uh, in uh, around the world like you get it less and less the first one is um, actually yes i have to find out here the first one which i would like to actually express is a get about get about when you put it together and when you would like to use it in a sentence is uh, something about travel transfer transport or, or even a transport some kind of message, just some figurative speaking. So, for instance, the sentence, I really have to get about the whole Europe after pandemic. So it means to travel around and to actually get to know Europe. The next one is get across. Get across, it means to actually get some message through or to overcome or to get it to the other side or to declare or describe or uh, clarify some some thought, some idea. So get across, it means more or less about ideas, thoughts, and some messages. So it means, for instance, I have to get across uh, the phrasal verb uh, topic to my students. I have to get it across. So it's, this is the meaning of get across. Get ahead. Get ahead means something like be better than the others, get ahead, or be ahead of the others. Uh, actually, to overcome, over, uh, overget uh, the others in some situation or in the races. So, for instance, uh, uh, we really need to get ahead our competitors to be the best on the market. This is from the sentence from the, from the business English, for instance. The next one is get along, and uh, it is uh, many times actually connected with the with the with the next one, get along with, or you can actually synonymically express it with get on with. What does it mean? It means to have a good relationships, to have an amiable, good, friendly relationships with somebody. So I really get along with all my neighbors. I never got along with my sister. Things like that, yes? So it means that something which uh, gets along, that, uh, that you have a good relationship, you have a, you have a good contact. The next one is get around. Get around is physically actually, uh, what it means really literally is uh, get around the problems. So overcome the problems or get around some block or get around, so physically get around to get somewhere, yes? Or get around is also about uh, spreading the messages. So, for instance, you have to get around the block to reach the, the entrance. It might be the, the note somewhere on the building. Uh, or you have to really get around all the problems in your life to feel better. Something like this. Then uh, the next one is... Um, the meaning is different, but it's also get around too. And the, uh, we, we can actually say it also in a context like uh, we need to get around to, to reach this point. Or we need to get around to have a time for our children. So it means, again, overcome something to get somewhere uh, to, to reach it yeah, or to achieve something. The next one is get at. This is also in a different context, in different sentences, very different meanings. So get at is mean, meaning like reach something. So reach something in a, like literally in, in a, I don't know, reach something on the tree or reach some shelf. 
So that's a get at. I need to get at this. Or to find out. Or to, uh, or to mean something, to think about that, or to just note somewhere. So where do you, for instance, the question, typical question from dialogue, where would you like to get at this? Where would you like to get at this? Or what are you getting at? It means something like, what would you like to say with this? So it means that it has a lot of like a really literal meaning and figurative, as I said at the beginning. Uh, the next one is get away. Get away means literally like get away, like leave the room, leave the space, go away. Or uh, get away means also something like for a short time to make a holiday, to make free time. For instance, I need some getaway for a weekend. It means that I need to relax. I need to actually do nothing. Or to escape from somewhere, get away. Or to actually... Something like escape also from the from the old system, from the old traditional rules. So it means also something figuratively. So, for instance, I need a getaway for a weekend or I need to really get away from this horrible situation or I need to really get away with all those uh, negative people around me. In all these contexts, you can say that. The next one is... Um, Get back. Get back is a literal meaning. Get back, go back, so return. Come back, return. Or to get it back, so get back something. Or to uh, like uh, like uh, revenge some, something to somebody. So it means something, I need to really get it back today. I don't know, something. Or uh, I would like to really uh, get back to him that he understands what he did to me. So it means something like revenge. Uh, get by. Get by is a, is a, it's a very colloquial spoken language. They use it uh, primarily in the situations like um, I have some money for uh, I, I, I have the last hundred euros and I can say that Mm, 100 euros, okay, I can get by the end of the month with this 100 euros. So it means that uh, get by that uh, it's enough money to, uh, to, uh, to reach the end of the month with this money. So get by means to, to have a sufficient amount of something. Or I have some water and uh, I'm in a desert and I say, okay, I get by with the water until the end of the day and then I'm done. So something like that, yeah? So you get by with something. Get down is another uh, phrasal verb with get. Get down means like uh, like really destroy somebody or, or really uh, making it uh, really depressive or get down really literally like kneel and get down on the floor or sit down on the floor. Or get down means also to write it down or... Uh, really like get down uh, physically and literally get down from somewhere. So when somebody is sitting too high or is somewhere higher, get down here or from the ladder, for instance, you tell him get down. So it has a lot of literal, but also figurative speaking, uh, figurative uh, meaning. Yeah. Uh, for instance, um, get everybody down. I say it to somebody. Yeah. Or really, my job is really getting me down. It means I'm, I feel really depressed. I really feel horrible after doing my job. Or um, please get it down in your notebooks because you will need this information. But, so you use it in a different context. Uh, get down to is very similar, but uh, you actually get down to means to, to start off the job, the start of the work to actually launch the work, launch something. So, for instance, we really need to get down to this project right now because then we are behind. You can say that in a context of business or something. Get in. Get in means um, get in, actually to get in, like literally meaning get in to get somewhere inside, yeah? Yeah. Or to actually manage some job in some time. Or to uh, collect and gather something, so get it in. Uh, or uh, when the train or the airline uh, gets somewhere, so they get in somewhere. 
or when you enter, when you actually, or when you have a word in some uh, situation, in some discussion, when you, when it's your turn, when, when you have finally some words you get in, or to enter, just to actually start some, 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 something. So you enter somewhere, figuratively, uh, figurative meaning, or just to enter, just literal meaning. So again, you have a lot of situations when you can use get in. So for instance, uh, I couldn't get a word in or I need to really get in this building to start the, the process. Or uh, the, uh, he really got in the government after the elections. Or uh, we need to get in this dialogue to start it all over. So situations like that. Then I really realized that there is a really lot of them. Get off, get in with, get up with, get on, get out, get out of, get over, get over with, get around, get through, getting, or get together. Get together is also a noun. Get together with a dash means a meeting, informal meeting, informal gathering or something so get together you you have it usually with your friends or with your relatives or yeah but then get together means also to gather with somebody so it means also the verb get up we all know get up and go get well so it has as you can see that there are so many of them i just explain you some of them that you have to really uh, actually understand them in the context in a sentence in in a specific dialogue in some situation to really uh, understand them better and actually also differentiate uh, the meaning in a different situations because as i told you get off for instance means to to escape from some situations to leave from somewhere or to leave or abandon from from, from some space or abandon somebody or don't actually like touch anything like get off get off your with your hands for instance or get off your hands off or get your hands off we can say or get off means also in a, a sort of very spoken language like to fall asleep is also get off he got off and you can actually really encounter it in some dialogues or in a literature dialogues or when you are watching series drama drama or movies or anything so this is really hard how to how to remember it but the get is the first, which is quite important, and as I told you, few of them is actually really a lot of them, and how to understand them. Next time I can really prepare the the, the other one, but I, now I'm I'm checking out that it's actually quite uh, the long list. So when I take, for instance, a look, there will be minimum fifteen of them when I can actually find out uh, uh, with uh, with uh, other phrases. So how many phrasal verbs we have with look or with give or with uh, turn. So there are quite a lot of them. And, well, my recommendation is just really uh, read a lot, dialogues, listen a lot, and get it uh, deeper and, and better into your mind through the context, through the particular situations. That's just my my vision and my recommendation. Thank you very much and see you next time at my next video.